Hi, I'm Manishan and I'm here at the Monk Cocktail Bar in Buxton and today we're going to look at breaking down every element and working out how we can make the absolute best gin and tonic. And the first thing is the glass. You know, most bars and restaurants you'll get your gin and tonic in like a, either a short or a tall kind of Collins glass. Uh, ideally you want your gin and tonic served in, in a Chardonnay glass like this. Uh, it's got a really big wide open rim and a massive balloon which means it's going to like aerate all that gin, it means you're going to get absolutely as much out of the aromatics and the botanicals as you can. And also it's got a stem, which means when you're holding it, you're not going to warm up the spirit, you're not going to warm up the ice, you're not going to start making it all melt. Uh, so then we'll add our ice. Uh, as said in our previous video, um, that you're going to want to make your own ice really. Um, bagged ice isn't, isn't great, it kind of generally deteriorates very quickly. Uh, and then we'll add our spirit. Now I'm using Mason's Yorkshire Gin. This is a really beautiful small batch gin. They make it in batches, I think, of about 200 bottles. Um, it's our closest thing we have to like a, a local gin, so it's kind of fun for us to play with. And it's got some amazing botanicals in there. They keep the, the recipe pretty close to their chest, but um, for me, it's got notes of orange, lemon, vanilla, coriander, uh, and the juniper comes through really nicely. Gin's not gin unless it's got juniper in. And, and I know they grow their own juniper bushes, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so because we've got this big balloon, we're getting loads of lovely aromatics. The gin's really like alive in there. Yeah, beautiful. And I always encourage you to like, when you're making your gin and tonics at home, to sip the gin. You know, think about what you're working with. Um, a lot of people have never had a gin without tonic in it. Uh, so it's quite fun to try it. But then your next element would normally be tonic water. Uh, we're not going to use tonic water today, we're going to use a Jack Rudy Cocktail Company tonic syrup. This stuff's amazing, it comes from uh, Charleston over in the States um, and it's actually created by a bartender who just wanted to up his gin and tonics and it really does that. You'll get the same kind of tannic things that you get out of your standard tonic water but then a whole load of other big flavours that none of them are there to overpower the gin, they're all there to work with the gin, bring out as many flavours as possible and you just have these two beautiful ingredients if you've got a good gin and your good tonic syrup working together to make your drink better and better. Our next element would be our citrus. Normally we use lime in gin and tonic. It has that good combination of a dryness to balance any like kind of sweeter or bigger flavours in there. Uh, and also a citric acid element which is going to cut through the tonic and the gin so you can taste everything and everything's a bit cleaner. Uh, with this combination we don't need to do that. It's already balanced once we add the soda water. Um, so all we're like, like looking to do with our uh, citrus element is to bring a new flavour, make it a bit more interesting and just yeah, up the drink generally. Uh, so we're going to add a little bit more ice and then our pink grapefruit here. So you want to cut like a nice wide slice and then just squeeze the zest over the top of the glass. You'll see all the oils flying out of there, it's having like a massive aromatic to it and just run it around the rim of the glass, but really gently. You don't need to be rubbing it on there. It's going to get too bitter and there's going to be too much if you do that. Stick it in your glass. Um, and then if you try it again now, we've got a syrup in there, we've got the grapefruit. Everything's working together to bring out as many flavours as possible and make this drink just as big and as... They talk about flavour volume and it's all about bringing volume to your drink. And then finally we'll finish it with a bit of soda water. We've got two shots of gin in there, a three quarter shot of the syrup, so we want somewhere between like four and five ounces of soda water. So we're not going to drown this drink, just add a little bit of water. And what you'll find is with the effervescence, more flavours will come out, that's the beauty of effervescence, it's why beer, you want your beer to be fizzy, it's why you want your champagne to be fizzy, um, it's the same with the gin and tonic. Oh, that's just next level gin and tonic. Everything's there, big flavours, loads of volume, super refreshing, it's beautiful.